to the Christian Fellowship Church. The mic. I need the mic. I'm being told I need the mic. I thought I was allowed to. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Christian Fellowship Church Wednesday night Bible study. Um, my name's Kevin, and we're going to get right into this. So this is the last Bible study of the month for our theme of the month, and I'm going to read the theme. Ma uh, Malachi chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Then they, excuse me. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in the day, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So this month's uh, study or this month's theme has been about family focuses. How our relationship is with God, how our relationship is with each other. So the way we interact with each other is the same as we interact with God. That's how we're supposed to. The way we treat God is the way we're supposed to treat each other. Give me just a second here. Let that sink in a little bit. How we treat each other is how we treat God. And we're going to get into that. If we do it under the least of these, we did it under him. So the scripture for tonight that this whole Bible study is coming from is uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. So when I was researching this and looking up what, what this scripture means, I often go to Noah's uh, 1828, uh, Noah Webster's 1828 dictionary. Now, the thing to note about Noah's Dictionary, the first Webster's Dictionary that, he, that was written by him himself was an accompaniment to the King James Version Bible. So the King James Version Bible was published beginning in 1611. So in 18, by 1828, the English language over here in America had, was taking its own path. And Noah Webster, being an elder in the, uh, in the church, was noticing that there's a lot of younger people that just didn't understand what, what the words meant. He actually put the, the, the Webster's Dictionary together in order to, for the people to understand the king's English. And with that said, in his, that word honor, the scripture says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Now there's about 10 different things and I've only picked out three of them. Number one, the esteem due or paid to worth, high estimation. Number two, a testimony of esteem, any expression of respect or of high estimation by words or actions as the honors of war, military honors, funeral honors, civil honors. And number four was reverence, veneration, or any act by which reverence and submission are expressed as worship paid to the supreme being. Okay, so... As I was seeking God, what, what this message, what, what He would have me to learn, to learn, to be able to share with you, I offended somebody. I said something that they that offended them. It actually disrespected them, and it was in this building. And God said, "There's your answer. This is what this Bible study is all about. This is what this this scripture is all about. It's not doing things or saying things that disrespect." each other, that we would prefer others greater than ourselves, that we humble ourselves. And as we go along in this, we're going to see, because it's all about our relationship with each other as how our relationship is with God, how Jesus came to earth, walked among us, how he treated people. That's what we need to, to be able to do is to be like Jesus, to be Christian is to be Christ-like. Okay, so before we get into this, let's have a prayer if you bow your heads with me. God, we come before you. We, th we ask you, Jesus, in your precious name, Lord, that you would teach us through your Holy Ghost, through your word, 
that we would learn, Lord, what it is that you would have us to know, what it is that we need to know, Jesus, to get to you, to get to that final destination of heaven, Lord, to not be left behind when you leave with the church. We ask in your precious name that you'll bless us tonight. Open our ears, open our hearts, and open our minds. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, so to be Christ-like, Jesus came down from heaven, and he walked from basically from from, uh, Galilee down to Jerusalem and gathering his flock and brought them all to the Mount of Olives. He went up on the Mount of Olives to give what we call the Sermon on the Mount. Um, he, he delivered a message that day of what salvation is, what it, had, what it is that we need to do, what we need to be like in order to be right with God. So in, in Matthew uh, 11, verse 29, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. The one... Jesus was so meek and so kind and so affectionate when he was talking. It's almost, um, it it sounds more like advice than it does commandments, but it's not. Jesus didn't give us advice. Jesus gave us commandments, but he did it in a lowly spirit. He did it in 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 a meek, in a matter of way, the way he wants us to treat each other, not yelling at each other. Now, Jesus wasn't a doormat. He didn't give place to the devil and those, the Pharisees and the Sadducees that were coming against him, he put them in their place. But to those that were receiving him, he was gentle, he was meek, he was kind to them. But this was not good advice. This is a commandment. It doesn't read like a commandment. It does read like advice. They call the Sermon on the Mount the Beatitudes. Well, they're actually the do or die commandments. This is what God's telling us to do or you're going to die in your sins. It's not good advice. Well, if you want to, you can. But that's how it reads, because it's meek, and it's lowly in heart, and it's gentle. He didn't say this if you want to. He said, take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For a lot of years, I didn't read these, the, the read all these things that we're about to read as commandments. They don't sound like that. They sound like good advice. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Peter, is there a problem getting the scriptures up on the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. This, I didn't, my bad. It was 2, 4 through 8. My apologies. Okay, but I just want to emphasize verse 7. But made himself of no reputation and took upon... Verse 6, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, it was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So Jesus came, God came down to earth, robed himself in flesh, and became a servant to, the, to all to everybody. In John chapter 13, verse 12, so after he, okay, John 13, verse 12, and Pete, this was supposed to be through verse 17, and I'm sorry about that. 13, okay, so after he had washed their feet and taken his garments, and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, know you not what I have done to you? You call me Lord, and you call me Master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet. You also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that has sent him. 
If you know these things, happier are you if you do them. But Jesus became a servant to everybody to be our example of what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be each other's servants. We're supposed to take care of each other, look out for each other. I'm going to go through some things pretty quickly here. John 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. And then Galatians chapter 6, verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward, to the mean ones. We've all had a boss here or there that wasn't too nice to us. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies and bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Okay, so these are things that the flesh absolutely doesn't want to do. If somebody's mean to me, I want to be mean. My, my, my flesh wants to be mean back. If somebody yells at me, they, I want to yell back. If somebody takes a swing at me, I want to take a swing back. But God's telling us this is not how he wants us to live. This is not how God wants us to be. And I just want to bring your, your, maybe your imagination back to the Garden of Eden. We weren't supposed to be fighting with each other. We were supposed to be one big happy family in the Garden of Eden, all sharing with each other, all taking care of each other, learning together, living together eating whatever we wanted, having feasts, gathering, gathering in the garden for feast days with, with God. We weren't supposed to be n- different nations at war, fighting, cheating, stealing. We were never, it was never meant to be like this. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you, learn of me. We have to learn what God wants us, what God intended us to be and what he now wants us to be in order for us to be saved. In order for us to be taken up into heaven, God's not taking anybody up that isn't like this. And we all, we, what we really need to, what I do is I, we have to look at everybody as if they were Jesus himself. And this means not just brothers and sisters in the church family, but every human being. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. He went to that cross to purchase the right to save everybody. Everybody belongs to God. We don't have the right to be mean or to be anything other than a humble servant of God to every individual that we meet, not just to the good, but also to the bad. It's our job. Whatever we do, we, whatever we do to other people, we do to Christ. We have to, when you're, front, when you're dealing with somebody in the grocery store or somebody's trying to fight with you about a parking spot or whatever it is, you gotta, we have to stop and look and think, okay, Jesus died for this person. It's my, my job to represent Christ is to be Christ-like to this person, regardless of what they're sending back at you. They, if they smite you on one cheek, turn the other. You know, Don't be mean back. We're going to get there with that. But he died for the sins of the whole world. He purchased every single solitary person. In Matthew 25 and verse 40, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you have done it unto me, one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. In, verse, in chapter 25, verse 45, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. Whatever we do to anybody in the church, in this building, outside this building, at work, wherever we go, the grocery store, I say that a lot because that's pretty much the only thing I do is go to work and to the grocery store. <laughs> but what, amen, okay, um, wherever, we, wherever we go and whatever we do, Wherever, when we, when, whoever we come across, whatever we do to these, whatever we do to anybody that we meet, wherever it is, we're doing to Christ. And whatever we don't do, we do to, we don't do to Christ. So if God's laying something on your heart, share with this person, invite this person, whatever. Go and be nice to this person. Talk to this, whatever it is. If we don't do it, we didn't do it to Christ. 
And if we're mean to somebody, and I'm just saying mean over and over again, but if we're any of, if we're anything but a Christian to somebody, we're 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 not being we're doing that to Jesus. We're going to answer to that because God owns everybody. Okay, Jesus owns everybody. He bought them with his blood. Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Thanks. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. He paid for us. We have to treat each other accordingly. Whatsoever we do in word or deed, we're doing to Jesus, no matter what. And it all begins at home. It all begins here. It all begins with the church family, with each other. But the church family is much bigger than the, than the crowd that we have here and online. It's just, there's a lot of us. And, and, and it's our interactions with each other that people are going to see that's going to let them know that we are Christians. They were first called Christians in Antioch because they, had take, they, they could see that they were living the way this man Jesus that they heard of told them to live. Now in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. We, don't, we can't make ourselves big eyes and little U's. We can't be the, the greatest of all. We can't be above them. This is what the world does. These, these actors and actresses and whoever it is out there that's not serving God, you know, they try to be the best of everybody else. And they try to be above everybody else and put everybody else down. That's not God. God said put yourself down and lift everybody else up. Esteem others better than yourselves. We can't get place to the devil or the flesh. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, and be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And in Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing. Okay, Pete, I'm sorry, that's supposed to run through 26. In verse 25 then, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Verse 26, and they that, may, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Titus chapter 3, verse 3. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy and hateful, hateful and hating one another. We're just as bad. Our, our, we are the tail of two halves. We are the only creature that God made that is both spirit and flesh. We live in both worlds. We communicate with heaven. We can't see it with our eyes, but we can feel it. We know it's there. We're in constant communication with heaven, and we're also in the flesh. Real quick analogy, Mary and, 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 um, and Martha, they were, they were running, Martha's running around trying to get dinner ready for, for Jesus and the disciples, and Mary's sitting at Jesus' feet just listening to him. She, was doing, took, she took, Jesus said she chose the better part, feeding the spirit side of what we are, half spirit, half flesh. Martha was tending to the fleshly side. Jesus said, this ought you to have done and not to have left the other undone. You, we, we are in the flesh. We've got to get up and go to work. We've got to take showers. We've got to do what we've got to do to get through this life, right? But we have to we have, to have a balance and, and put more emphasis on, on the spiritual side of, our, of what we are. But in Titus 3.3, 3, one more time, Pete, please. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. Before we were saved, before we came to God, before we gave ourselves to Jesus, before we began this journey to, 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 to be Christ-like, disobedient, we were foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts, pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. How about that? And isn't that the world? Isn't that the flesh? 
hating and hating one another. There's a lot of hate out there, but there's no hate in God. And if there's hate in you, the love of God's not in you. Amen? Amen. Okay, in Galatians 6, 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Isaiah 51, verse 1, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Earlier this year, when there was still snow on the ground, I don't remember exactly when, Pastor Elise was visiting, and he gave us a message. He delivered a message from this pulpit right here. And in that message, he began, he, he talked about somebody that did something very vicious and very vile. This man who took somebody and, and tortured them for, for a long time and, and just really uh, did a lot of horrible things. And he was more descript than I care to be with it. Um, in the end, he murdered that person, and he was caught, and he was prosecuted, this and that, but, but, but his point to that story was, do you think you're any better than that person who did that? No. In our flesh dwelleth no good thing. In our fleshly half dwelleth nothing. It is all that hate, is all that uh, vileness, all that, all that cursing. Everything that, that God's saying don't do is in us. There's no good thing that dwells in the flesh. It's only the spirit of God that allows us to separate ourselves from our vile half or to, to live in this body and not be that vile person. Okay? So in Romans chapter 15, verse 1, we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We're, God wants us to help each other, to not hate each other. God wants us... To, give a, to lend a helping hand, to look each other up, to, to see what we can do to, to help each other get across the finish line. As Pastor Giebler said in a message not too long ago, it's the, the job of a pastor to stand at the end of the finish, to stand at the finish line helping everybody get across. But we all have to do that. We all have to help each other get across the finish line because that's the point, is getting to heaven. In verse, and now we're coming to the end here. This is not a long study tonight, believe it or not. Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. And seeing the multitudes, now this is the, the Sermon on the Mount. As when Moses, when God sent Moses down into Egypt to bring, to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, Moses led them through the Red Sea. They were baptized, and he led them to the Mount Sinai. He went up on the mount. The mount was burning with fire and smoke and lightning and the voices and loud thunderings, and the people down below were terrified, and God was speaking to Moses, and Moses was speaking to the people. And he gave them, and Pastor uh, Ulysses preached the message, Moses delivered the law of the flesh which was condemnation. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that because you are doing this, because you are doing that. You've got to come, and now you've got to come and bring all these sacrifices every day, every, every month, every, every year, the early sacrifices. It was the, it was the law of condemnation. But Jesus came and brought the law of liberty. Jesus came and brought the law of freedom from the law of the flesh. Jesus gave us his Holy Spirit so that we don't have to serve our fleshly side, that we can serve God in our spiritual side. So now he's up on the, now here's Jesus having walked all the way from Galilee, all the way down to Jerusalem, collecting his flock, walking past the Sea of Galilee, finding Peter and, and, and Andrew and James and John saying, follow me. And as he was going, he was healing people. He was, he was casting out devils. He, people, he had an entire flock, just like Moses left Egypt with, Jesus got to Jerusalem with, with about 5,000 people. He went up on the mountain and delivered the law of liberty. He got up on the mountain and delivered the law of the spirit, liberty in Christ. And this is what he said. And I, and I want to reiterate the original point here. These, aren't, these are not, uh, this is not advice. This is the commandments of Jesus Christ, God himself, telling us this is how you have to be if you want to get to heaven. 
in Matthew 5, verses 1 through 9. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So this whole month's theme has been our relationship with each other as it relates to our relationship with God and God's relationship with us. And these are the, this is how God wants us to live. This is how God wants us to be, to be his children. In verse 9, one more time, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. To be his, ch- his children, we have to become these things. They're not attitudes, they're commandments. A couple more scriptures that we're done here. James chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. And so when, Noah, uh, when, Noah, when, when Webster was defining the King James, the words in the King James, Eng- or the, the King's English in the King James Bible, he defined honor as, as respect. And that, this is the one thing that we really have to have for the church family, for all of us in the building, all of us that are in the, in, in the, in the congregation, but to everybody we meet respect their liberty to be whatever they want to be god's given everybody free will we can't demand or expect people to do what we think what they should be doing they have the right to do what they want to do everybody's been given that by god we have to respect each other respect each other's everything privacy all that stuff but we can't violate people's liberty even even the lost people so when we come to somebody, it's, we have to just respect who they are and what they're, what, what they're saying. Whether we agree with it or not, we don't have to tell them. We don't have to say, I, well, yeah, I believe them. No, we, we make our stand on, on the scriptures of God, but we show them the respect that they, 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 God has given them, that we don't have the right to take from them. Matthew chapter 5, 37 through 48. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So a lot of talk, a lot of chatter, a lot of promises. God said, don't do that. Either say yes or no. If somebody asks you this, say yes or no. Okay, well, you don't need, um, okay, I'm not going to belabor that. You have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. So if somebody's abusing you or, or, or cursing at you or whatever, getting angry with you, you don't respond in kind as my flesh would do. My, if somebody, takes, somebody hits me, I want to hit them back. But that's the way I, I grew up in South Jersey. Um, but that's not how God wants us to be. Now, if somebody's, somebody's swinging at me, I'm certainly going to deflect it much as best as I can, but point is, is that we are not, God doesn't want us to turn around and be equally evil back to them. Okay. Verse 40 says, and if any man will sue thee at law and take away thy coat, give him your cloak also. Don't, don't fight with people. It doesn't matter. This world doesn't matter. By the way, we're on our way off of this planet. And it's not going to be long unless we, you know, we might live out our years, but it's a very short time that we're going to be here. We're not, this is not our home. We're just passing through. So it doesn't matter what you gain in this life. You're going to lose it. You're going to die and it's going to be, you're not, it's going to belong to somebody else. It doesn't, so are you trying to, trying to, 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 to gain and to, to be rich or to have this, to have that? Thieves are going to steal it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to rust away. It's going to rot. Verse 41, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with them twain. Go the extra mile with people. 
You know, you're, oh, I'm tired, I don't want to. No, go. Give to him that asketh thee. Asketh thee. Give to him that asketh thee. And from him that would borrow to thee, of thee, turn not away. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's probably the toughest thing to have to do. It really is. Because when somebody does me wrong, I want revenge. <laughs> but you've got you to crucify the flesh. We all have inordinate affections. And the flesh wants to do things that God's telling us not to do. And we have to say no to that. We have to crucify that. In verse 45, that you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. God is good to everybody, regardless if they're living for him or not. God takes care of everybody on the planet, whether, whether they're, they're, they're serving him or they're going against him. God gives everybody an equal opportunity, an equal chance to get to make it to heaven, to be to spend eternity with him. This is a do or die, all or nothing thing here we're doing, and people don't realize that. And the more I realize it, the more the, the, the more uh, fear I have for them. Don't do, wake up. Do you not realize you're deciding forever in this little brief couple of second poof of smoke that your life is in this world? This is eternity. It's never going to end after this. So it, it, when, when you put that in perspective, when you, when, you, when, you, when you look at things like, wow, when somebody's doing something that you know isn't right or it's, or it's offending you, 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 you look at them and just, and just think and realize, look, that you're, you're, you're not going to the right place here. If you die right now, you're, you're not going to heaven. And you're going to hell, and you're going to burn forever. So when we, we, if we put that in perspective in our minds, then it's easier to be kind to people that are being mean. It really is. So, verse 45, that you may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. Oh, I just read that, excuse me. Verse 46, for if you love them that which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? If you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. So Jesus is saying, if you, all you're doing is being, being good to your own family, to your church family, to your friends, to, your, to, to the people that you like, you're not doing anything more than, than the publicans. You have to be good to everybody. Jesus died for everybody. Doesn't matter who they are. <laughs> the beggar on the street, yeah. You gotta be kind, kind and good to everybody. Yep. Romans 14, 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. And the last two scriptures, Matthew 6, 14 through 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your, your Father will your Father forgive your trespasses. Amen.